If this season has taught us anything, it's to expect the unexpected. Southampton, Aston Villa and Everton have all flirted with the top four, Arsenal have flirted with relegation and Leicester are on the title hunt again. Nothing is quite as it seems, but out of all the clubs in the division, no side has arguably suffered more from the roller coaster of emotions this season has served up than Chelsea. Their summer business was very impressive, their form in the opening weeks very promising, and their displays in the autumn got better and better. However, just over a month since we published a video on how Lampard has fixed Chelsea's defence, trouble is brewing at Stamford Bridge once again. Since the start of December, the Blues have won just twice in seven league games, losing on four occasions. Lampard's free-flowing machine has been stopped in its tracks and they now sit ninth in the table, level on points with West Ham. Though only three points off the top four, early title optimism looks to have fallen victim to the winter's chill. And with Roman Abramovich watching on, fingers are starting to be pointed. But who really is to blame? Let's have a look. Let's start by addressing our analysis of Chelsea in our previous Explained, and see how things have changed over the past seven matches. We praised their summer recruitment in defence with quality additions in Ben Chilwell, Thiago Silva and Eduard Mendy. Chilwell met Lampard's desire to upgrade Marcus Alonso at left-back, Silva provided a plethora of experience, while Mendy was a much-needed shift away from the disastrous Kepa. All three were performing incredibly well prior to December, particularly Eduard Mendy, who boasted three clean sheets from his first three games in a Chelsea shirt. Thanks partly to their efforts, Chelsea conceded just 10 goals in their opening 10 games. Only Mourinho Spurs side let in fewer. But since then, significant cracks have begun to appear in their new back line. Chelsea's defence has gone from being the second best in the division to the sixth worst by goals conceded, having shipped 11 in their last seven matches. Humbling losses to Manchester City and Arsenal have only boosted the theory that Chelsea struggle against the typical big six, while they also threw away a lead against Wolves to lose late on. Performances have dropped considerably within their squad, starting with Eduard Mendy. While not disastrous, the 6'6 stopper is looking more like a short-term fix to Chelsea's issues in goal rather than a long-term solution. His save rate has dipped below 70%, the lowest return in his professional career. In fact, this is the 12th worst among keepers in the division, and especially concerning for Chelsea as only Man City's Edison faces fewer shots on target per match than Mendy. Errors have crept into his game, such as his decision to rush and concede a penalty against Everton, and he no longer appears the safe pair of hands he once was. According to Optus Stats, he has conceded 0.7 more goals than he should, while overall Chelsea have conceded 3.5 more than expected this season. Beyond Mendy, Chilwell and Silva have largely kept up the form that made their start to the season so promising. Chilwell is still only drilled past 0.6 times a match, while Silva's pass completion rate remains the strongest in their squad. The answer as to why they are conceding more may actually be further up the pitch. N'Golo Conte has been uncharacteristically sloppy on the ball with his unsuccessful touches per game at a career high in the league, and his famed pressing skills along with Mason Mount have been largely ineffective against the toughest oppositions, making the midfield more porous. Against Manchester City, both were guilty of lacking a tenacity to complement their work rate, with a Kante error leading to the Sky Blues' third goal. In total, Chelsea gained 55% possession yet faced 18 shots. It was a similar story in the 3-1 defeat away at Arsenal, 61% possession yet still facing 15 shots. With an apparent lack of direction and order to their press, Chelsea are being overrun against technical operators. Manchester City and Liverpool have midfields that instinctively know what they are doing and perform as a unit. The same cannot be said for Chelsea and it's up to Lampard to ensure his midfielders know what they are doing. And in the attack, there is growing frustration with the displays of new signings. And while Kai Havertz has been particularly poor, it's Timo Werner who has emerged as the target for most fans' annoyance. The German is feeling the heat of life in the Premier League, having failed to score since netting against Sheffield United back in November. That's now 12 games for his club without a goal. That said, luck hasn't been on the 24-year-old side. He has hit the post five times this season more than anyone else in the division, and his XG also reflects his misfortune, currently 2.8 higher than his actual return of four goals. It should also be mentioned that 11 goal involvements in the league in Europe, only halfway into his debut campaign with Chelsea, is far from a disaster. Werner's main issue has been his quality of efforts on goal. Prior to December, the former RB Leipzig star was taking 2.4 shots per 90. Yet in the last seven games, where he has received more minutes than any other forward and still failed to score, his shots have actually risen to 2.9.
This in theory should be positive, but Werner is only hitting the target with one of those shots. And when he is testing the keeper, he's only scoring 25% of the time. Both statistics are his worst run as a forward since joining Leipzig from Stuttgart back in 2016, and his biggest goal drought since that time too. Werner needs to rediscover his scoring touch and fast. Much of his highlight reel out of Germany consists of him driving at defenders with pace and lashing home a finish. Last season, he scored nine times following a carry of five metres or more in the Bundesliga, managing just over 11 carries per 90. This was more than any player in Europe's top five leagues. But against Premier League defences, he has enjoyed far less success. Though his carry numbers have stayed the same, almost a third less of these carries end up in a shot, and not a single one in a goal. One of his most significant attributes has been muzzled, and his goal return has suffered as a result. Lampard has often pushed Werner out to the wing in order to accommodate either Tammy Abraham or Olivier Giroud. Both have rewarded Lampard's faith with three goals each in the past seven games, but moving Werner has only created new problems due to the German international's ineffectiveness playing out wide in Lampard's system. Not only did he rarely play that position last season, only 4% of the time, he isn't comfortable providing the link-up play necessary for the role at Chelsea. Werner loses possession on two of the three occasions that he receives the ball on the wing, while just over a fifth of his passes are progressive. This means the Blues often go backwards when attacking through Werner or lose the ball completely. Considering Chelsea are far more focused on building attacks through periods of possession rather than the swift transitions from defence to attack that Leipzig typically deploy, Werner is struggling to reproduce the form that earned him his move to Stamford Bridge. For all the struggles of individual players, Frank Lampard is ultimately the person who will pay the biggest price if results don't improve. And the numbers don't put the Englishman in the best of lights. He currently holds the second lowest win percentage of any Chelsea manager in the Abramovich era and the lowest points per game return of 1.67. Two wins and seven points from a possible 21 since the start of December hasn't helped his cause. His new attack, despite all the millions spent on upgrading its potential, has experienced a drop in non-penalty XG per game from 1.7 last term to 1.4, and it's still not clear who his preferred front three really is. Lampard has chopped and changed in hope of success, but as the Timo Werner example shows, that has meant pushing players out of their best positions. It will also be up to Lampard to find a place for Kai Havertz within his system, having tried him out as a false 9, number 8 and number 10 to varying degrees of success and failure. The Chelsea legend will also need to shoulder responsibility for the fact his side can't overcome tougher opposition in the league. The vast majority of their wins have come against sides in the bottom half of the table, and while that is to be expected, with the race for European football tighter than ever, points will have to come against their direct rivals. Lampard has pointed to injuries, most notably to Hakim Ziyech, as a source of frustration. And he has also highlighted that it was just a few months ago that his side enjoyed their unbeaten spell, breezing through their Champions League group with ease. Every team suffers fluctuations in form. But he knows better than anyone that at Chelsea, time is rarely on the manager's side. The Athletic are already reporting that potential alternatives are being considered, and the club's board won't be afraid to act if needed. Luckily for him, his next eight games only feature one of the traditional big six, so Lampard will be hoping they can repeat their earlier success and reverse the headlines. If not, there will be no doubt in Roman Abramovich's mind over who is to blame for his side's current failure. So that was our take on what's happened to Lampard's Chelsea, but what do you make of the current situation? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like, and why not check out the rest of the series, including our explainer on Brexit and the Premier League. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.